Dan Bedondi here for truthradioshow.com and um, we're going to talk about a very controversial subject and I can't believe I have to sit here and explain this stuff. Uh, it's all centered around mainly the book of Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to go over this in a minute by detail to see what the Bible has to say about this. Now there's religions out there who believe, that's right, they believe that Jesus returned in the first century. Yeah, after he uh, resurrected from the dead, he met with the disciples and he went to heaven and came back and all the prophecies were fulfilled that he told about and the tribulation and rapture and all that stuff already have, have happened. Some people uh, misconstrue the biblical verses or the sequences and everything. Uh, some people even believe he returned in the 1800s. But let's see what history and the Bible has to say about that. And this is an ongoing thing, folks. People, I mean, this is a religions of beliefs that are the gaining uh, popularity by storm because people do not know the Bible. So therefore you'll have somebody on a pulpit teach us stuff and misinterpret it purposely or interwingle other stuff that has nothing to do with it just to get people to believe their message. So I think the whole entire world would know if Jesus returned or not. You know what I mean? So let's get what the Bible has to say here. And these are basically the Bible prophecy sequence. And again, um, you know, we need to go up to the Bible and Scripture to know what's going on and also look into history. So let's just see what the Bible has to say first. First, um, everybody knows there's a seven-year tribulation, which it's not really seven-year because the Bible says three-and-a-half-year tribulation against the saints. Then the next three-and-a-half years is uh, the wrath of God against the wicked. That's clear as day. I mean, like, um, we could argue all day long when the rapture's uh, post, middle, or beginning, whatever the case, is not what this video is about today. I believe, three, uh, like the Bible says, three and a half years, um, Satan will be given power to overcome the saints. And when the sun and moon loses its light and the man of perdition is revealed, just like Jesus says, then, okay, nobody knows the day or the hour, about any time after that point, Jesus comes back for his people, and the last three and a half years is the wrath of God upon all the wicked on the planet. And there's no more, there's no such thing as left behind. If you don't believe at this point, you, I mean, you're part of this New World Order system. Then you have the thousand-year millennium. So again, you have uh, what's going on now, the present time. You have the seven-year period, three and a half years of the tribulation, three and a half years of the wrath of God, which is the seven-year tribulation, people call it. And you have the millennium kingdom. That's when uh, Satan is bound. There's no evil at all for a thousand years on this planet. Then, you have uh, Satan. He's freed one last time. And it's going to be the, um, the judgment on the wicked again. And that's it. You know what I mean? It's, uh, after that point, is all evil is banished for eternity. So let's uh, keep that in mind, okay, as we go on with this uh, presentation. So I want to get into the book of Matthew, chapter 24. This is where these people get this from. And I cannot see how, because they don't know how to read right. That's the only thing I can understand. Uh, even figure out all these people just lying deceivers. And there's a lot of pastors out there preaching this. I, I mean, I could not believe how many people are actually preaching this stuff that saying that Matthew 24 proves over one, one word. This right here, I'm going to get to it. All right, right here. It says, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, let's get, this is the very verse, the, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. Verily say, I say unto you, this is by Jesus himself, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, what is he talking about? Many religions believe, because right now he's talking to the disciples. So is Jesus saying, the disciples' generation shall not pass till these things be fulfilled. This is where they get an idea that everything was fulfilled and done in the first generation, I'm um, sorry, the first century, in the generation of the disciples. But is that true? Is that what he said? No, because if he said that, he would say, your generation, your generations will not pass. Because he's talking to the disciples. He, said, he would have said, your generations shall not pass till these things be fulfilled. Obviously, they've gone and, you know, they've died and everything else. Their generation passed. 
Is he talking about their generation or this generation in the future tense of what he's talking about? So let's really get down to it. Like, let's start from the beginning of the book of Matthew. And people need to understand this. It's going to be a little tedious, but you really need to understand this, okay? All right. At the beginning, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So now Jesus, they're at the temple. They're departing from the temple. That's where they are right now. And uh, the disciples came to him talking about the temple. And Jesus said, This temple will be destroyed. You, they'll see every stone on, uh, thrown down and everything else. Now, you need to uh, really pay attention. And, he, and as he sat upon the mountain of olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, now this is a different time. Now, this is when they were departing the temple. And this is later on when Jesus sat upon the uh, mountain of olives. He didn't depart the temple and all of a sudden he's on the mountain of olives. No, that's not how it works. This is two different time sequences. When they left the temple, as he departed from the temple, the disciples came to him and asked him this question. And he told them that one stone will not be left unturned. And then later on, this is a different time now, when Jesus was up on the Mountain of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. And this is a separate time from this. All right? Saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What is the sign of your coming in the end of the world? They're asking him when the end of the world is, when his return will be, when he's coming back. That's what they're asking him. And so we got all this clear now. This is back when they were leaving the temple. This is now on the mountain of Olives, different, two different areas. Okay, and Jesus answered to them and said, "Take heed that no man deceive you." Then he, this is the sequence of prophecies. Okay, you need to pay attention to these. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, and, she, and that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now he's saying this ain't the end. These, are going to, these things are going to happen, but this is not the end yet. Listen. For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And shall, there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are just the beginnings of sorrows. That's it. And he's saying these are just, this is just the beginning. It's not the end yet, as he says right here. This is just the beginning. And you'll see the point I'm going to get to in a minute. Okay? We have to go through this, see what the scripture has to say, then we can talk about it. All right? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. And he's telling you more things are going to happen. More things are going to come before his return. You're going to be delivered up and you're going to be afflicted and shall you and you shall be hated for all nations for my sake, by all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall, be, it sounds like today really, <laughs> but he's offended by everything, and shall be betrayed by one another and shall hate one another. Sounds like much like today. And uh, many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And again, it sounds like today. <laughs> and, uh, and because of this iniquity shall bound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure it to the end, the same shall be saved. All right, and there's more prophecy coming here, I highlighted. And therefore shall, I'm sorry, here we go. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for witnesses unto all nations. Then the end shall come. So let me ask you people that believe that the first century Jesus returns. I want to shorten up this video here. It's already nine minutes. So let me ask you something. In the first century, when Jesus was right now at this point, he's talking to them on the Mount Olives. Let me ask you, did the entire world, did all nations across the world know about Jesus? No, they didn't. Only a lot of Europe and some of the Middle East and whatnot, they only knew about Jesus. Not the whole world, all right? Then he goes, to, and then the end shall come when the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. He said his word is going to go all over the entire world unto all nations. And then the end shall come. So, in the first century, did this happen? Did any of these things happen? 
Did they have massive pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places? And the kingdom, which would they, yeah, they had wars, but nothing like today. Did they have many uh, antichrists up back then? They didn't even know who Christ was, most of the world. So how could they have antichrist? So how could there be people coming in his name at the time when he hasn't even left yet? When the whole world doesn't even know anything about him? And the whole world's going to have to, uh, you know, before his return, his, his word's going to be preached upon the whole world. Right here. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for witnesses to all nations. And people, he's very direct. All nations means all nations. Not just Europe. Oh, uh, the world at the time was just Europe and uh, the Roman Empire. No, all nations across the entire planet. Not the Roman Empire. Then the end shall come. So you, can, you can't honestly say, and no historian can prove, that all nations back in the first century has heard the word of God. Because they, and if you believe that, you're a liar. And then, therefore, shall the, see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Now people say, oh, the abomination of desolation has already happened, which ha has not. This is the abomination of desolation. And people believe it's already occurred, so Jesus have, uh, right here, I'm just uh, reading here, people think this has already occurred, which it hasn't. This is a future event. The abomination of desolation would occur in a Jewish temple in Jerusalem, the third temple coming. Most Bible prophecy interpreters believe that Jesus was referring to the Antichrist, who will do something very similar to uh, Antiochus. I can't pronounce his name right, forgive me. Um, basically, in the atrocious, he didn't, he didn't have any of these things the Antichrist would have. This is confirmed by the fact that Daniel, what Daniel prophesied, did not occur until 167 B.C. with uh, Antichrist, I can't pronounce his name, he did not confirm um, a covenant with Israel for seven years because there's going to be a seven-year peace deal. They didn't have no peace deal with Israel back then. Could any historian right now tell me there was a seven-year peace deal with Israel back in the first century? Even in the 1800s. Please tell me that, because you're a liar, if you can. And it is the Antichrist who, in the end times, will establish a covenant with Israel for seven years, then break it, doing something similar to the abomination and desolation in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. And everybody should know the prophecy that the third temple will rise out, which man will be called God by the Pope, which I believe the Pope 99.9% .9 is the false prophet of the end times, will deem this man, this, um, this uh, political figure, to be the Antichrist. I mean, to be God, which is the Antichrist. So, no, the abomination of desolation did not happen yet. So, as you can see, everything so far did not happen yet. And Israel didn't even become a nation again until 1947, so for the Third Temple to even be rebuilt, it's utterly ridiculous if anybody thinks that already happened yet. And then, let them in Judea flee into the mountains. The people in Judea flee into the mountains yet? No, they haven't. Let them who are in the housetop take, uh, do not take any one thing. The, you know, I'm just going to read through this quick. You let him, which is in um, the field, turn back to get his clothes. And woe unto them who with child, to, and you know, to them that give suck in those days. And right there, right there. In those days, he's saying, those days, not these days. That's a big, 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 big uh, thing right there. If he's talking to the disciples, saying, in your generation, why is he saying into these days? He says the end shall come in this time. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, not these days. If he said these days, he would be referring to the days of the disciples, their generation. No, he said this generation, those days, that's right there. Then well, there's more. I'm going to keep going because I'm going to totally debunk and destroy anybody's uh, myth and uh, uh, stupidity to believe that Jesus returned in the first century. I'm sorry for the, um, being rude like that, but you know, when it comes to biblical scripture, people misinterpret it. It really ticks me off to no end. Uh, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. This stuff did not happen anywhere in history. Not one story can prove it. And then shall be a great tribulation. He says the tribulation's coming. Has the tribulation came yet? No. You don't need to be a scientist to figure that out. Or, um, or any kind of a professor or anything like that. 
So such as was not since the beginning of the world, nor even shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should be no flesh left saved. So this is, uh, what, <laughs> 2,000 plus years ago? 2,000 years ago? Those days would be shortened? Uh, that would have been real short. And for the elect's sake, for those days should be shortened, and then that any man say unto you, here is the Christ. Now, you need to pay attention to this. Anybody says, here is the Christ. He says, do not believe it. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, as so much, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Again, Jesus, his message was just spreading through the Roman Empire and through Europe and the Middle East. The whole world didn't know what Jesus was back then. How could there be? There was, there was not one Antichrist figure back then that was um, being a false prophet uh, saying he was of Christ. Not one. And behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. And this is um, a couple of other religions that believe he came back in a certain place. He says, Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. He says, Believe it not. And th this is very powerful. For as the lightning coming out of the east and shining unto the west, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Every eye is going to see this. There's going to be a Hollywood grand entrance, cataclysmic event the entire world's going to see. Could any historian, Josephus, jo, uh, Josephus and all these people ever say in their historical books and accounts that this has ever occurred? No. There's not one point in history that this ever happened. For wh whosoever the carcass is where the eagles be gathered. Now right here, pay attention. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Now, people say, well, this is... Uh, Eclipse, this is a, you know, solar or lunar eclipse, whatever. No, this, he's saying right out, this is a big event. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Could anybody honestly tell me this has happened in the first century, or any, anywhere in history at all? Has anywhere in history the sun and moon lost its light, and the stars fell from heaven? And this ain't metaphorically, folks. This is li literally the stars are going to fall from heaven. This is actual things that are going to happen. Could anybody in history right now say that this has happened already? Has the powers of heaven sh been shaken yet? No. And if you say so, you're a liar. And this right here, just I mean, I don't, don't even have to go on any further to debunk this whole thing. To anybody that preaches this gospel that he's already returned in the first century or any other time is a complete liar and a false prophet. But I'm going to go on anyway, because uh, for the sake of the context of it, I like to talk about things in the context. And then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. This is huge. There will appear, appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth, not Europe or the Roman Empire, all the tribes of the entire earth, every earth, I mean every tribe upon the earth, shall mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man come in, in the clouds with great power and glory. Now, could anybody in history tell me right now that this has already occurred? Has the entire world seen Jesus return and the, you know, him coming in the clouds with great power and glory? No. And there's more. And, sh and this is going to happen. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. Because we wouldn't be here if that, that really happened. Anyway, and he shall send his angels with great sound of trumpet. And they shall gather his elect from four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So, if I'm a believer, you're a believer, we're the elect, okay? Why are we still here if he's already uh, gathered them already? That's making your head spin a mile now, uh, 10 miles an hour, isn't it? Uh, duh, yeah, because he hasn't come back yet. The first century uh, preaching is a lie. Or any other time. He's not returned yet for his people. These things have to happen for us, and he's talking about a future generation, not the generation of the, um, the pro I mean, sorry, the disciples. He said this generation, the future generation he's talking about, not theirs, because he would have said, your generation will not pass. He would have told them your generation, but he says, no, this generation. And I want to come right back to this here, and um, again, those days, right there. Those days, okay? In those days, he's telling the disciples, in those days, this generation, not your generation, to the disciples. 
Now as people like, is it really clicking in your head yet? And uh, there's more. And now learn the parable of the fig tree, which his branch is yet tender and putting forth leaves, ye know the summer is near. And so likewise, ye, when ye shall see these things, when shall see these things, okay, they haven't been seen yet, know that the near is even, um, I'm sorry, know that is near, even at the doors. So it's hard to read um, the old uh, English here, so I apologize for my stuttering here. But verily I say unto you, this generation right here, this generation shall not pass till these things be fulfilled. Now, at right where we are right now, anybody that believes in the first century thing, can you honestly sit here and tell me that Jesus is saying the disciples' generation? No, because he would have said, your generation will not pass till these things be fulfilled. These things have not been fulfilled yet. So does that mean, what, the disciples are still alive right now? No, they're not. Does that mean um, the dead disciples and the whole Bible is a lie? No, it's just because you don't know how to read right. Or you got let false prophets deceive you to make you think one thing. When you, it's clear as day. Those days, those days, and those days, and then shall the end come. You know what I mean? Like, it's clear as day. Jesus, right now at this point, he's talking about a future generation. All these things have to be fulfilled before this happens. Clear as day. I don't know how, many, how much more you got to beat into your head. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day, here we go again, of that day, that day, okay, he's not talking about the time of the disciples. That day, the hour, and no man knows that day and the hour. No man, not even the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah, now, anybody in spiritual warfare and everything should know what the days of Noah are like. The, the days of Noah, okay, let me get... We are now just within this century here have come upon what the days of Noah are like. The days, the first century, was nothing, nowhere near like the days of Noah were. Not even the 1800s. We are living in the end times, folks. Everything that's happened in the days of Noah is happening now. The sexual perversion, everything else. None, yeah, of course there was uh, sexual perversion back in the first century. But nothing like the days of Noah. The G DNA um, genetic mutations and everything else, uh, all the stuff that's going on, folks, from the days of Noah, it's happening now. Nothing like that even remotely close happened in that, those days of um, the first century. And more here. Yeah. And for as the days were that were before the flood, right here, he's going on more about it. The, what the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. We didn't, again, the days of Noah, were no, uh, the first century is nothing like the days of Noah. Nothing. And people in biblical um, research and churches, you really need to know and understand what the days of Noah are like. They say, oh, it's just corruption in the earth. No, there was a lot more than what you think. There was stuff, you know, you probably read out of a sci-fi magazine. Those were the days of Noah, all right? The, the days of Noah goes very in-depth. I mean, it goes so far in-depth that... Uh, Again, it sounds like a lot of sci-fi, and that's where a lot of sci-fi braces their stuff on. It's the awful truth of what happened in those days. The ancients and everything else, the giants on the earth, the Nephilim, and uh, after the flood they were known as the Raphaim. So you really, then nobody could say, honestly say these things, any of this stuff occurred in the first century. And I'm going to read the rest here. You know what I mean? And um, I shouldn't even have to do this, but, you know, but... And knew it not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. So, if God already took us all away, why are we still here? Yeah, I mean, he's saying right there, you know, and knew it not like the flood, but like, like the flood that took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He's got to take us all away when he returns. Why are we still here? Then, behold, two in the field, one shall be taken away, and the other left. Why are we still here, then? The woman shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken. Why are they still here yet? You know what I mean? Watch, therefore, ye know not the, uh, what hour your Lord come, but know this. What if a good man of the house had known what, what, um, to watch, when to watch the thief? I'm sorry, again, it's the old English here. Uh, he would have watched. If, basically, if uh, the owner of the house know, knew when a thief was coming, he would stay up to watch and uh, wait till the guy breaks in. So he's basically going over, basically, um, so uh, this, 
he's describing, okay, different things so you cannot possibly misunderstand this. That's what he's doing, okay? He's giving you examples, okay? So you cannot, and, and I don't care what age you come from, I don't care from the first century all the way to the 21st, this way you cannot ever misunderstand what he's talking about. That's why he spoke in parables sometime and gave many examples. So you cannot misunderstand his worry. Is this really rocket science? Do I have to really go on and explain this more? And again, the Lord of that servant shall come in the day when he looked not unto him in the, um, in the hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder, appoint him with a portion of the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. None of this stuff has happened yet. And right here, too, in uh, the Revelations, when you were chapter 1 7, he had, Behold, he's coming in the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they all also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Has every eye, okay, has every person on the earth seen Jesus return yet? This would have been written in every historical document, okay? And we know the elite like to cover history, but this would have been in everybody's historical books. The entire world would have seen this cataclysmic event if this was true. Not just over in Europe or over in uh, Israel, whatever. The entire world, they legitimately mean the entire world, every tongue and kindred, every nation, every tribe will see his return. It's a grand Hollywood entrance. The entire world's got to see this. So I don't know how much more I got. I mean, that, this is ridiculous. And uh, back then, in the first century, this is what only Rome, people like, well, Rome ruled the world. No, if you call that the world, you, you really need to understand uh, uh, geography because this isn't even a, uh, a tenth of the world if you think Rome ruled the world. And, you know what I mean? Like, you really need to <laughs> um, get your head right because this is not ruling the world, folks. And uh, certainly here we get into the mark of the beast um, because... There would have to be, because people say, well, Nero was the Antichrist. He issued a mock. No. He never issued a mock in the right hand or in the forehead. Now, all the new Bibles say on the right hand or on the forehead. No, it's in the right hand, in the forehead. All translations from the King James Version down to the oldest trans translation, oldest script, say in the right hand, in the forehead. It's referring to an implant, not a tattoo or a mock by Nero. Nero didn't even come, he wasn't even a smidge close to being anything like the Antichrist. The Antichrist Christ rules the entire world. Not just Rome, not the Roman Empire area of Europe and all that. He rules the whole world, not just this. All right? So people need to get your heads in order because if you really believe Jesus returned, and I'm telling you this right now, if you really truly believe after this, and I want you to read this for yourself, if you believe Jesus returned in the first century, number one, you certainly do not know jack about history, and number two, you certainly most likely don't know jack about the Bible. And number three, maybe, uh, you know what, you should just take your Bible and burn it because um, you're a complete uh, fool. I, I'm, I hate to say it that way because you're a complete fool. No, don't burn your Bible. I'm just uh, using that for a metaphor. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it just makes me disgusted that I had to sit here for a half hour now and explain this to people who do not know the Bible or history. And again, if anybody right now, leave the comments, message me. I'll debate anybody. Uh, the pastors out there who are teaching this, um, any uh, teachers, I'll debate anybody on this. This is just one, one book of many that uh, I can use here, and I'm sure people got other stuff too that they could try to use to prove the first century return, uh, and you know, him returning in general at any other time. You cannot tell me one of these single things has happened yet. Not one has happened yet. Again, every eye in the entire world will see. It's not just going to say, oh, he came back in the desert, or he just came back in Israel, or he came back in the Middle East or the Europe. No, every eye in the entire world will see this. And again, if you could, these are all the sequences he lays down. Every bit of sequences he lays down, we get to that. So let's do the math here. Before we go, let's do the math. I'm going to get out the calculator, all right? So... Just say he came back, they believed it was about 33 AD. That's when Jesus resurrected, you know, died, resurrected, and all that. So let's, I'm going to do the math here. You know, I can't believe I've got to freaking do this. But we're in 2019, right? Not 91, I'm trying to do this through the camera here. 2019 
All right, it feels like 2091. I mean, anyway, minus uh, 33 AD. Okay, minus the seven year, um, the thousand year millennium, seven year tribulation. So we are 979 years past the millennium kingdom. We had uh, 33 AD, all right, then the seven year tribulation and wrath of God period, thousand year millennium. Now, at the end of the millennium, everybody should know Satan's loose one more time, and it's the end, okay? He's thrown in the lake of fire. All evil is banished to the lake of fire. At this point in time, there's hit evil with no wrong longer rule for the rest of eternity, ever. And at this point, okay, 979 years ago, we should be in this eternal state. Why is there death and famine on the earth now? Why is there evil dictators across this planet? Why is the New World Order global elite right now setting up a global kingdom for them? If this has happened already, how, how do you explain this? 979 years past the Millennium Kingdom. Why are we still here for? Why is there still death? I mean, we would be here in peace and glory. There'd be no death, no nothing. But why is this happening? Why is the global anarchy setting this stuff up for? Right now, only in the last couple of like, couple decades, this thing existed. Only in the last century that most of these processes started to unfold. Israel become a nation again in 1947. The mark of the beast, this has been developed by decades ago. Why just now, okay? How is this existing? How is any of this existing right now if we already passed this kingdom? 979 years after the Millennium Kingdom, if your theory is correct. But once again, let's go right back to the Bible, what the Bible has to say, and again, I'll debate anybody at any time, and I'm not trying to be here like a superhero, and I want to know I'm not a pastor, I'm not a reverend, I don't have a, a college degree in the Bible, and I don't need any of that junk. I don't need something from mankind to, tell them, to show me, to show to you that I am qualified to know what I'm talking about. No, anything, I don't care if you have a 12-year degree education in the, the biggest colleges in the world, it does not give you authority over anyone with biblical scripture. God gives you the authority. The Holy Spirit through you gives you the authority. You do not have to be an ordained minister, ordained priest, an ordained pastor to be the expert on the stuff. No, God is the expert on the stuff. This is exactly what he says. I'm just a regular person. I'm a talk show host. I preach the word of God. And I go right by what the, you know, the Bible says, the Word of God. Not what mankind says. And you cross-reference this with history, folks. And the Bible is 110% dead on accurate. 110% dead on accurate. And again, and anybody use uh, people with the credentials, pastors, ordained ministers, and whatever, you want to step up to the plate and get slammed? Because I'm very angry right now that people are daring to misuse the Word of God. To preach another Christ. To preach that he came back. And he says it right here because he knew people would do that though. He told you, okay. He gives you the signs of his coming. Because he knew people were going to do this. If somebody says he's in the cave, believe it not. You know what I mean? He says it right in Claire's day. He's telling you that there's going to be Antichrist to come along and everything else. They didn't have Antichrist back then. The whole world didn't know who Jesus was back then. It took over a thousand years for the world to know. And people still find out to this day. So man, people, you really need to get a grip. No history, no reality, no the Bible. Dan Badandi, truthradioshow.com. God bless and shalom.